And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and, and this is a triumphant return once again to Amazing Artifice, a... Wait, and the first time, and the first time I've done this in months. But I, but I am not alone in this endeavor because with me, the madman behind Metahumans Rising, and a, and a man who's been and a man who's been on the te been on the um, been on the hot seat in the temple at le at least twice by this ne by this now. May as well make it a hat trick. The one and only T. Dave Silva. How you doing today, man? Oh, I'm all right. How are you? I'm do I'm doing good. Um, it is. Cur it we are f we are fully in the dog days of summer, and I'm just w I'm just counting the days until fall comes back, so I can deal with some um, saner weather. I uh, I'm very fortunate where I live. Like uh, the dog days of summer here are like mid to high eighties, and uh, I I can dig it. Mm -hmm. So, some of you who may who may who are more aficionados of the temple may recall a episode of Geek Watch earlier in the year called "A Gathering of Heroes." Because of the fact that I have a bunch of weebs in the temple, the I, the core idea was to take um was to take a random a random character generator from from the old days of Marvel heroic role playing. And tr and try and make a and try and make a hypothetical hero course for a U for a UA Great Lakes branch. And oh, and what and um after after we did the the um, interview with MetaHumans, I had posited the idea of converting some of the power sets that were created in that um setup into MetaHumans Rising. And de and de and you were. Very, you were fair, you were pretty open to that to that crazy little idea. Then again, um, give, given some given some of the things you put up on the blog, I'm not you're not exactly immune to crazy ideas yourself. Uh, you know, I've been a, known to post a couple uh, oddball things. Mm -hmm. Um. So what we have now, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go through the full character sheet. Obviously, that would that would take way too much time. But we are going to go through ten. We are going to go through ten characters. Um. And or rather, ten power sets. Right, especially since due to due to the way a series like My Hero Academia works, every character, every ca a lot of characters who are in who are in that superhero community have a have a hero name and have a name specifically for their superpower known as known as a quirk. So there's so there's plenty of stuff to to build upon when it comes to that. And I'm going I'm going I'm not going in alphabetical order with these. I'm going in order of their creation in the original um episode. Okay. So starting at the top, we have Foxfire, whose quirk is Kitsune. Which is exactly what it says on the tin. They ha they have the kind of powers you would expect a um a mythological Kitsune to have. Some some fire manipulation, mainly fire, mainly fireballs, a lot of and a lot of stuff with invisibility and um, visual only illusions. Okay, uh, so that was actually pretty straightforward. Um, uh, just a couple of clarifying questions when you when you picture this character. Um, how how far down the the fox road are we going? Like, do they have like claws and teeth that are like viable weapons, or or is it just fire powers? Um, it is it is mainly is me is me. I would I would say I would say that the, that when it comes to the whole claws and teeth thing, it's that's not a factor. They're mostly humanoid. They just have the they just have a 
They have they have a it's a humanoid body but with a key, but with a key, a fox like head and um multiple tails. Okay. So <clears throat> keeping in mind that a, a large part of this is is uh mostly narrative when it comes to we're just kind of picking out the the right set of um boons for the character. Yes. Um so I, I would probably set this up as a, a primary support power uh, supporting their stealth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just as, a, as, I, as I understand that they're, they're very hard to spot naturally, right? Yeah, um, very hard to spot, and Kitsune love playing Trickster. Then I, I would also take the, uh, uh, the, the hidden um, or reduced detection boon. Mm -hmm. um, to, to make sure that even when they use their powers, you don't necessarily pick up on what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, I give them some range because, you know, either throwing fire at people's. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, I'm going to add devastating, right? Just, uh, which is just like a little damage boost because, well, fire. Um, uh, and then I'm going to add uh, illusions and. When we go with illusions, there, there's a, a number of choices that we can make at that point, just depending on how how good they they are at um, this type of, of magic. Mm -hmm. um, so we can do things like uh, illusions that look so real you can't tell that they aren't. They can interact with people, even uh, go so far as to like. Um, you know, pick up physical objects or, or uh, um, you know, harm someone if they needed to. Um, we can also create it so that they're distracting and uh, they cause people to get confused by looking at them uh, or, or uh, give them the ability to, say, make nine copies of themselves, mm -hmm. right? And that would be... What's that? When it comes to this particular setup, the illusion is... Uh, a Kitsune's illusions are not too far removed from, say, seeing a mirage. Um, there, it's it's a very visual only kind of thing, and when you try and touch the th the thing, illusions. Um, just because I, I, I feel like confusion is kind of essential to the Kitsune, and that might be my read on it. I'm just kind of imparting it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, this is all up to interpretation, so that's not really uh, required. But that's how I would take it. All right. Um, and then the, the other question is, uh, does this Kitsune... Uh, uh how how do you describe it it's um walking between blinks right like if you look away they can just be gone yeah and then appear somewhere else yeah that's why that's why i was considering um not full on teleport but lim but limited inv limited invisibility when someone's not looking at them um uh, so, uh, I'd actually, uh, I, I'd actually kind of define it in that way of like, uh, it, it's movement when no one's paying attention to me, mm -hmm. right? Because we're, we're not really so um, uh, hard pressed on the mechanics, but it's like as long as no one's looking directly at them, they can move and they can move extremely quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you picture any kind of defensive capabilities, I, I might give them evasion on top of that so that uh because it can move between the blink of an eye it's hard to like actually hit them right yeah. but that's that's optional mm -hmm. so uh, and that's, that's kind of how i build it yeah so next go going for something a little going for something a little um a, a, a little a little bit on a different level is um jet falcon Whose quirk, whose quirk is Technomancer. 
they have a de they have a degree of tech of technology of short range technology control that they primarily use for a set for essentially a essentially a mo a modular um, power armor that they that they have set that they have set up um what and the and um the only, and because of that um technology control they can they can release blasts of say, of say static electricity okay so they have a uh, their their technopath with power armor and they can create electrical blasts outside of the power armor is that right yeah um okay so uh, the Technopath, um, again, I'd start them off as a support role. Uh, this time I probably started off with either, uh, depending on how the player versus the character, supporting either computers or repair or engineering, like one of those three talents. Um, or alternatively, just supporting intelligence, mm -hmm. right? They have like a, a hyper-advanced mind. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then I would give them a control uh, for all electronics. Uh, I give them, I, I call that a broad control, so they, they have to take like, an extra boon for that. Um, and then you just take your your range uh, boon to choice, um, whatever whatever degree that you want there. Um, and the uh, uh, as far as electricity, again, we just add a secondary role for offense. We'd add in a, a devastating component for a little extra damage, um, and then we get into the power armor, which is which is kind of an interesting concept, right? So, is does the power armor function without their power, uh, and they just use their power to build it, or is it something that only exists because they will it to work? It's the la it's the latter case. If somebody if somebody tried to if somebody tried to u utilize the, utilize the, this particular their only re the only reason this um this kind of power armor even works is because they're manipulating it. Um, I it's if you don't mind me making a 40k reference, it's kind of like how um orc technology only works because they believe it'll work. Whereas if anybody else tries to tries to use orc technology, it it's just a mess of jumbled parts that parts that shouldn't even function okay so clearly we're going to paint this uh suit of armor red right uh <laughs> yes yeah, because red what logic, we're going to make sure they're very quick mm -hmm. um but uh uh, <laughs> uh what i would do is i, I would add in a, a a secondary role for defense uh i'd probably go full role for this one uh, just because it's it's like full on armor, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I'd also take uh, passive defense, which means that even if I'm surprised, it applies, with the caveat that it requires some form of activation, right? Mm -hmm. And this is I think about it, and then the armor snaps onto my body, um, and then from there I can I can tack on any kind of other like power armor specialties that are now linked to activating the armor, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say I have, like, radio communication or, or uh, some type of, like, infrared vision. All these things are... Uh, I, I take all those other things within this power set, but that part I would link to activating the armor, right? So I have a, a set of abilities, which is my technopathy and electrical blast, that I can use at any time, and then I have this other set of abilities that I can add on once I type the time to activate my armor. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I uh, yeah, I think that covers covers everything there. Because yeah. uh, I wasn't hearing anything too too crazy in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can really just kind of go wild at that point as far as like, what does the armor do? <laughs> yeah the the whole po the whole point with um when it ca I'd I'd actually ar I'd actually argue that this particular setup leans more towards engineering. The mm -hmm. the big the big appro the big approach is that this is this is this is somebody who um is the living embodiment of if of uh, if it if it exists I can I can build it take it apart and mod it and build and build and build it again um 
I'd say it, I'd say they they'd um not be too far removed from say Forge from X Men, of just being just being able to jury rig and put and put stuff together as, like it like it like it's as easy as breathing. Yeah. So um, this goes back to the question of do I want it to support a specific talent or do I want it to support intelligence in general? Mm -hmm. Um, because the I understand everything about it also includes like sciences and you know, other details that might, you know, we as players might not think about, but like, okay, well, I need to know the chemical composition of this metal so that I can determine what it's like ballistic rate of fire is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the kind of like weird details that you get into. Um, also, quick aside, uh, in the core book, uh, in our Hall of Legends, there's a character named Technica who is a technopath, but instead of building um, power armor for herself, she actually builds uh, armies of robots from electronics that are around her. I get, so, I get you. Yeah. So, uh, and the the big the key the key thing when it comes to when it comes to this sort of when it comes to this sort of setup of of modularity is uh -huh. I didn't I didn't want I I'm. That's the reason why I didn't go into what could be done with the power armor because the the key the key idea is, um, atta attachments can be at, can be added and can be added and removed, um, on, um, on the fly. The inspiration what the inspiration actually was, uh, was the was the rapid was the rapid fire choreographed pit stops you see in motorsport. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I, I would suggest is um, I would take the uh, the tricky boon, mm -hmm. and I would also take uh, tools, which allows me to have like a hidden weapon and actual tools and a couple of other little perks depending on how much you invest into it, uh, along with something called shift power. Mm -hmm. And so what that's going to allow the character to do is um, already in the game, there's a mechanic that lets you spend willpower to modify your abilities, right? And I think I, I've mentioned this before mm -hmm. with my my um, Human Torch example where he can throw fireballs, but occasionally he wants to make a cage out of fire. He doesn't buy trapping. He just spends a willpower to do it, you know, as a one-off thing, yeah. right? And I, I think that's going to be an essential factor if the power armor changes every time he builds it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what Tricky does is that gives me a free use of that once a session, um tools gives me another use of that once per session and then shift power lets me say well it's not just a one-off thing it's going to last this entire scene my arm is going to be different yeah right so these these are all fun little things that we can do um to make sure that the the armor is like hyper versatile mm -hmm. and i will i will admit i'm not sure how familiar you are with um battle tech but one other um, point of, point of reference that could be used is the hot swapping abilities of Omnimex. Um, okay, so that has to happen in a um, that has to happen in a, in a mech bay. Um, and what I was envisioning is uh, doing it on the fly. He, uh, he... So I, I could you could actually just limit the power to say I have to have time to to retool it. But because he's a technopath, I just kind of assumed that he's like, oh, well, I've rerouted this thing using my technopathic ability, and now it shoots fire instead of ice, or you know, vice versa. Yeah, he's he still he still has to he still has to he still has to, he still has to swap he still has to swap modules out, but it could, but one could easily ha have the setup that he keeps a port that he keeps a portable um bay bay kind of bay kind of setup that he can that can be that can be prepared, but um. He still, but he still has to go, go back to the thing anytime he wants to do any hot swapping. Yeah. So, so essentially, what I would do is I just I'd put a, a limitation on it that says you just have to predefine what your alts are mm -hmm. for a given uh, um, session, right? Yeah. Until you can get back to your workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, so, not quite as versatile as what I was describing earlier. You still have that versatility, but you kind of have to plan ahead a little bit. Yeah. Um. So, next is Hardcase, whose quirk is Sandcastle, and um, the funny thing is, when when we did the random roll for this, we ended up getting Mimic, but we decided to go with a di with a different approach. Um, 
hard ca hard case creates um creates co creates constructs that that can that um that ch that can channel powers that he's co that he's copied. He can't he can he it's a case of power mimicry, but he can't do it directly. He has to it has to be channeled through a through one of his constructs. Okay. So uh the constructs he can create on the fly or or does that take time? He he can create he can create them on the he can create them on the fly. There's just a rule of every um every con every construct can only have he can every construct can only have one power. Okay. So if, so if so um if he ha if if he ha if he's if he's managed to copy say um Say su say super strength and <clears throat> fire manipulation. He'd have in order to use them both. He'd have to have two constructs out, one with each. Gotcha. All right. So, um, again, we're we're looking at a a primarily a support power. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're gonna take the backup boom to start him off, which is it allows you to make a. Or to to call up a uh, a copy or or some kind of minion something along those lines like this could be a duplicate of yourself like multiple man or this would be like summoning a horde of imps uh, wh whatever you want to interpret your backup as looking like and there's a number of um, advancements within this boon to kind of customize it like how quickly you can summon them you can make that faster um, how many you can summon like uh, it starts off with just summoning one person to I summon entire armies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the question of uh, powerful backup, right? Like, how competent are these uh, these creatures uh, that he's creating? And um, so that's really the uh, the question here, or the crux of the question is like, how much do you want to invest there? Um, just to set like a baseline competency. Um, and then I would take something called alternate source um, so that when I create a backup, I can just detect, dictate, like, this guy is fire, this guy is ice, this guy is lightning, um, and now I've covered Final Fantasy for some odd reason. Um, but the uh, um, that, that's the core concept of what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you can also take fun things like uh, within backup, there's, like, a coordinated... Uh, a bonus that you can have um, so that you guys are really good at working together. Um, but yeah, that, that's really the, the heart of where this character is at is, is backup and this alternate source. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you, uh, is that, that feel right to you? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say so. Um, so the, the next one is Pacha Kamak, whose quirk is Huaka. And I I will admit that I went full um I went full Aztec with this kind with this kind of thing as the name as the name suggests. Um, they are they are able to they're able to control um earth, you know ro rock mud stone dirt all all that all that kind of stuff. The okay. sig the signature is er, is earth armaments basically cr basically creating a a um. A weapon and and some and some very light armor um, around them or using surrounding material. Uh, very much reminds me of. Um, uh, did you ever play City of Heroes? Uh, yeah, and I've I um and I, I still I haven't touched it in a while, but I do have access to some of the to a to a private server when it comes to that. Uh, great game, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it very much. But I just I remember the the stone tanks, and that that's exactly what came to mind. But uh, okay, so the the core book has a example power called Stone Defense, mm -hmm. um, which allows you to wrap your body in stone and rock. Like you basically just like the ground comes up and like you know covers you up. Mm -hmm. um, it's primarily defensive in nature. Uh, it gives you um, armor. And it clicks the the armor advancements of boost armor, so uh, already you can pretty much ignore uh, most small arms fire. Uh, and then it takes impervious, which is uh, if you have impervious, you just ignore damage for 
uh, the rest of uh, until your next turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, but you only get to use it once per session or with willpower. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I used this analogy before, but um, some of the top tier abilities in Metahumans Rising say once per session. Mm-hmm. But then willpower says if you spend a willpower, you get to do it again. So it's kind of like uh, um, uh, the the boon is a drug, and then you know how much do you want to pay to keep using that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the game is its own dealer. Um, but then we also have the the unmoving uh, uh, boon, which prevents you from getting knocked over or pushed back. Um, and then we have a, a secondary role for support to give you strength. Um, and then like like super human levels of strength, right? Like your power now supports your your normal physicality. Yeah. Um, and then we also gave it the barrier ability so that um uh, it's not just I cover myself in earth, it's like I create a earth wall if I want to. Uh and you know, depending on how deep down that hole you want to go, you can make it mobile, you can keep yourself mobile, you can have it like regenerate. Uh, it just really depends on what you want to do with the the barrier there, like how you're envisioning it. And then you said you're creating a weapon, so I would probably tack on a secondary role for offense. And um, like when I think of Earth and like Earth concept characters, like I picture like a sledgehammer, right? But what what was the weapon in particular, or was it just I create weapons in general? Um, it w- it was it was a a um re- a on one hand, a re- on one hand, a round shield about this about the size of a tr- about the essentially a buckler. On the other uh, hand, a um, essentially a um, a earthen version of a um, macahuitil. Um, the the uh, those obs- those obsidian war cl- those obsidian yeah. war clubs. Yeah. Um, it's a sword. It's not a club. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. Ha- yeah, I guess it. I guess it technically could count as a sword since you, since that thing could since that thing could cut someone's head off once, and then the obsidian breaks. Well, that's that's just part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, it's more. It's essentially a club that's shaped like a maha mahahuitil. Okay, so um, I I probably go. So we've already got the shield covered. Uh, as a, a shield function, right? Because that, that's that aren't pervious again. Um, but again, as far as like the supporting for offense or the secondary role for offense, um, again, we're going to give them some devastation for the extra damage. Mm-hmm. And uh, depending on how deep down this line you want to go, uh, I might give him uh, penetrating to, to represent that there is nothing sharper than obsidian. Um, and so it just cuts through anything, or I might give it like if I really want to get nutty with it, I might give it something like defended by quickness, or um, uh, because it doesn't matter what kind of armor you have, if it if it comes close to you, it's going to cut you, right? And that's really just a, a question of um, how sharp it is in in your kind of like how you're envisioning it, right? Um, I and then... I see this kind of I see this kind of setup as sh- as sharp, but not exactly dur not exactly durable. Uh, well, I mean, so then you can take like a limitation of like uh, you know, if you do more than in damage, the the weapon breaks, and I have to reform it, and I have to spend an action to do that. Um, and that that's kind of a fun mechanic right there, mm-hmm. right? Like I can do like insane amounts of damage. But if I do it, I have to take the time to reform my weapon. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's how I would handle that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, quick aside, so if you don't mind me talking about another project really quick. Go ahead. Um, so I, I wrote an article for uh, Accessible Games Quarterly, and uh, uh, the last issue featured a character named Sage, which is an immortal Aztec warrior that uses this uh, sword or, or club. Um, and, uh, part of their curse is that they're stuck in the state that they were when they were cursed. And, uh, so is everything that they were wearing at the time. So, uh, when she, she hits with this weapon, uh, the Ascidian may chip and break, but it just regrows. So, I, 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 I thought it was interesting that we kind of hit on the same concept. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think we can chalk it up to great minds think alike. Um, thank you. Uh, was it was there anything else we want to cover with with this character's concept? Or, um, or, or I think. Yeah, right yeah, I think that covers. I think that covers everything. Okay. Um, next is vibrato, whose quirk is 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 um diaphragm. Um, they have they they have there there there's two main things that they that they have one of the first one is um sa is sound control and the se and the second is um shape shifting though their shape shifting is limited just to humanoid forms and when we di when we put this together we had made the joke about um it's impos it's impossible to assu to assume vibrato's gender because even vibrato doesn't know what vibrato's gen gender is well, all right. <laughs> um, uh, and as far as far as the sound controls, it's mainly it's mainly, um, con it's, mainly con it's lim it's localized, so they ca so they can't con they can't um they can only mess they can only mess with say with say the w the way hu the way human sounds w sounds work in a get in um let's say um fifteen feet around them. So it's not like a, uh, to to talk vampire for a second. It's not like a uh, was an asimite who can just like shut down all noise in like uh, an entire building or something crazy like that, right? No, um, it's it's ma the main the main use the main use that it that there's cert there's certainly some degree of, vo of volume control, but in but vibrato the the way we had set it up um, doesn't do doesn't do in turn doesn't do volume control per se but might mess with say pitch or mess with accent or mess or give a or um give a masculine looking character a feminine sounding voice when they're around them stuff like that okay so uh for this character we're going to start off with a um uh support power uh i probably give them just a base bonus to their expression mm -hmm. um but then I'm also going to take control, and uh, you know we're going to define that as uh, human sounds. Uh, we'll probably take a selective radius for my range component. Mm -hmm. You said about 15 feet, so that's actually going to be uh, like a, a uh, like the bottom end of radius. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a huge uh, distance. It's just what's in their their immediate area, um, and then. Because this is where my mind goes, I'm gonna take uh, meddling and uh, disorienting. Um, because if I can play with sound, I can start messing with one's inner ear and uh, you know really uh, you know cause them to lose their balance, not be able to focus, put them uh, into a different mental state. Through that, and I, I don't know if this character you were saying that level of control, but that's kind of where where my head goes with it, right? Um, so correct me if that is or is not accurate. That is fairly accurate. Okay, so the other aspect of that, uh, let's talk about the shape shifting now. So here, uh, I'm going to pick up alter self, um, which is another one of the support wounds, and uh, we're going to have. Um, multiple forms, and and this is just allowing them to uh, um, shift to whatever the the uh, uh, or, or flexible alter self. Uh, this was this is going to allow them to uh, take other humanoid shapes, which I think was the implication. There, it's not like Plastic Man here. Um, they're they're more just like I touch this person now, I turn and look like them, right? Um, so they, they don't have, they don't have to, they don't have to look, they don't have to, um, they don't, they don't require touch in order to look like somebody. I, uh, I, I just said touch as an example. Um, but, uh, there's no, like, there's no requirement in the power for that. Um, mm -hmm. there's actually a, um, a character in reflection in the hall of legends of the core book that he had, whenever he touches somebody, he has no control over it. He's going to look like them. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we say he uh, on this case because he he was a male before the transformation, and tends to avoid uh, contact with other people because he doesn't like changing. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
the um, anyway, so Ultra Self is going to allow you to, to adjust your um, physical characteristics as necessary. Um, I might give them uh, an added support for disguise on top of that. And then uh, when they mimic people, do they also got to get their powers? No, it's appearance only. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I may or may not give them like secondary roles in offense and defense. Uh, it, it doesn't sound like that's really like where their stick is. Um, but instead I, I focus more on like the subterfuge and disguise side of for strong guys. So now I'm super strong and I can punch you. Right. Uh, and if at some point you really want to do that. Uh, you can just drop some willpower and, and pick that up for like a, a one-off kind of situation. The only w <clears throat> the only way for them to shape shift into soup the closest thing that they could do is j is just shape shift in into somebody who it is more is more of a physical athlete. So yeah, but it, but but if the, but in terms of super strong as a as a power, they wouldn't be able to replicate that. Yeah. So like I said, I, I probably leave off like the, those other like. Uh, other roles for offense and defense mm -hmm. uh, because we can, we can kind of live in this space for uh, mimicry and, and looking like other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, I, I'd focus in on disguise, I'd focus in on subterfuge uh, just so that uh, when they look like other people, they're really good at making other people think that's who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so, not necessarily the, the physicality of Mystique, but certainly the uh, the the uh, deceptiveness. Yeah. Um, now next is backdraft, whose quirk is dead zone. Um, the the appro um, this takes this takes one of two forms. One is the fact that they're able to generate a a very thin field ar around them, and this effect is purely personal, but can be extended to anything that they're holding onto. That negate that negates um ec that negates excess energy, um. So because because so because of this kind of setup, um, when this field is active, they could they if they if they walk through a raging inferno, um, they they would they would effectively be fireproof because that's too that's um too, that's that still is that that amount of heat is still in excess, so it would be ca so it would be nullified, um. The the other aspect of of this is um is being is being able to nullify um psychic effects. I if somebody tried if somebody tried to mind read or mind control or the like, it would it would get it would get cancelled out. And he and um he would know that somebody tr that somebody tried to do something some kind of psychic fuckery, but wouldn't know but wouldn't know where it came from. And can he impart this on? You said they, they have to touch the person, right? Um, when it comes to the energy nullification, the only way it is personal, except it, it is it is himself and whatever he's holding on to. Right. Okay. So. So yeah, potentially like uh, two other people. Mm hmm. Okay. I just, I, I just want to make sure I have the scope of the power before I start suggesting stuff. Um, so I would, uh, I take care of my base first. I'd start off with a, um, a defensive power. Uh, I would take the, those armor, uh, now it's complete immunity. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I might go armor and impervious. Um, but another way I might take this is I, I might go like intangible and phased. Which is just it, it uh, but with like the limitation of I can't pass through physical barriers, right? So phased works kind of like impervious, but it's a different effect mm -hmm. uh, where you're defining like, well, there's one thing that will always penetrate my uh, phased, um, whether that I could just ignore any type of, of uh, attack towards me for a turn. The key, right? the key thing with this is that is that it's t is that it's tied to. Um, energy. Um, 
So, so, oh, okay, so it's energy only. Yeah, so a, a physical a physical attack will uh -huh. go, will go right through this field, but th but okay. things like but um things like fi awesome. things like fire, things like um things like light things like lightning, things like full on lasers, um no effect. Okay, so in my mind, um, like for whatever reason, I was like, well, a punch is kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. Right, and that—that's why I went down that armor. Right. All right, so so scrap the armor. We don't need that actually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, this thing called resist, um, and then we're gonna just uh, define a uh, a couple of things. Um, so resist lets you pick certain types of damage, right? And if you uh, take it twice, it gives you immunity to that type of damage. Okay, so. I, I would uh, take it for, let's say, quote, undefined energy um, for all the characters that say, I shoot energy beams, and they don't really define what that means. Mm -hmm. And then I'd also take it again for uh, psychic force. Then I would take the alternate source boom so that I can modify that undefined energy to be whatever I need for that situation, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, then, because I can extend this to whatever I'm touching, I'm going to pick up aid as a support power. Um, and there's a, a few uh, uh, bonuses within aid, which is like flexible empowerment, um, and uh, or empowered and flexible empowerment, which allows me to actually convey my boons onto somebody else, right? And I, I would take that with the limitation of I must be touching the person to do that, mm -hmm. right? Or must be holding the person, sorry, not just touching because touching implies that you know, like a dozen people could just have their hand on the character somewhere and they would get this bonus, whereas holding, I like, I, I'm limited to two, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that would allow me to then convey this energy energy negation to uh, my my allies or people that I'm trying to rescue. Yeah. Um, the reason the reason a bit of the when we hit when we were conceptualizing this one, one of the things that we had went with is that they um they before the before they really knew what they what they were before this person knew what they actually had actually had access to they were a um, firefighter who would who okay. would, get, who, would um, care, who would bring a riot shield a riot shield with him because he because because of um because his idea was just to was just to um, blow was just to use it to blow through the um, flames since for all he knew it at he as far as he knew at first he was just fireproof um Okay. So maybe I, I I would send instead of starting with like undefined energy, I would start it as fire, right? Yep. Fire and psychic, um, and then again take that alternate source. So I can vary it as necessary, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, I'd say, yeah, I, I can I can I can certainly go I can certainly uh, go with that. Um, I think that I think that covers it when it comes to when it comes to um, backdraft. Um, the next one is Sonic Bloom. Um, because I was because I was listening to Hiromi Uehara at the at the time I was writing. Um, whose quirk is wind tunnel? The I basically wanted to do a speedster, but not but not but not go full on the Flash when it comes to this kind of thing. Um. <laughs> If you're familiar with the whole concept of bo of say boost rings in Sonic games, that's kind of what so that's kind of what she can do. It's just that she's creating the she's creating these little air pockets that yeah. allow that allow her to um cat to catapult herself in different directions. Okay. Um. So we're gonna start with support power. Uh, we're gonna support movement. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we're gonna take the the new movement of uh, wind tunnels. All right. Uh, within this, we're gonna take some advancements, which are um, 
boost speed and rapid acceleration, which, uh, so just to get into the mechanics for a second, normally if you want to move a, a range increment, because we, we don't, uh, in many parts, we don't measure things out like you move 10 feet, you move 15 feet. Uh, there's close range, short range, medium range, mm-hmm. right? And it's, it's based on like your environment and the narrative. Okay. Um, so, so what these let you do is one, uh, um, so <sighs> boost speed lets you move an extra range increment whenever you use your movement power. Rapid acceleration lets you do it for an action instead of as a turn. Okay. Um, and then depending on how fast you envision them, we can go, you can pick up multiple instances of boost speed. Um, and then on top of that, we have other advancements uh, like out of the blue, which is um, if they hit somebody uh, after making a movement action, it hurts more. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like, if you remember, there was a episode of uh, the Justice League Unlimited, uh, where the Flash is like literally circumnavigating the Earth just to punch Lex Luthor and Brainiac Hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't have to be quite so exaggerated. Again, we're not talking about Flash levels, but we are talking about like you build up momentum and then you hit somebody, right? Yeah. Um. Or, I'm sorry, uh, out of the blue means you, you catch them by surprise when you hit them. Mm-hmm. Uh, momentum is, is where you get extra damage for uh, taking that movement action before hitting somebody. Right? Uh, and I, I would probably pick up both of those just because, you know, if we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic is, like, already exceptionally fast, and so this just seems like something that would apply. Um, yeah. And then I would probably add in just a, a basic... Um, um, Secondary role for offense, just because uh, you're moving quickly and and it's one half mv squared equals d, and that that v is velocity. Mm. Uh, so you know you punch fast, it hurts more. Um, and then there is a question of do they do they go down like the self healing and regeneration route uh, because their metabolism is so fast. And then you tack on limitations about you gotta eat all the food, um, right? That I wasn't I wasn't going with I wasn't going with that approach. They ha- they have the kind of build that you would see somebody who does a whole lot of track have, but uh-huh. it, but it's it's not but they're not burning through them they're not burning through their metabolism because the speed is mainly coming from the the um cat the catapults that they make. So right. oh, there's a it's less a it's less of that and more uh, and more of them being a human pinball which is why their um he, their actual costume is fi- is fairly um is fairly armored especially since we had envisioned a bit of a running gag where she t- where she tends to crash a lot <laughs> well that's fun uh because uh since they're using this external force to propel them they don't necessarily uh, think at super speed and therefore run into things a lot. Yeah, the bi- the big pr- the big problem that sh- the big problem that Sonic Bloom has is she's not very good at the whole brakes part. Yeah, so um, I might actually take a a drive to go along with this power of a uh, uh, miss trajectory, so that um, I can I can generate willpower by intentionally missing when i use my my movement abilities Mm -hmm. and landing somewhere i don't want to be uh and this may you know result in like i've run into a wall and now i have to deal with that or you know i completely missed the villain and hit my own teammate and we have to deal with that complication right there's all sorts of fun things we can play around with that too right so i I would add that into the drive so that uh i'm empowering the player to like bring that in as a narrative aspect And when it comes, and um, I will, I, if I, if I ever commission art, art of her, I'd, I'd, I, I like to, I like to envision it as a, as a hev, as the kind of a heavily padded version of the of an outfit that an old school aviator would wear, you know, with the with goggle goggles and all. Mm-hmm. Um. 
and because because of the fact that I like to go with exaggerations when it comes to running gags, if if it's a if if it's a case of crashing, it's not a case of of say l say lightly getting thrown into a wall. It's more of it's more of a case of you go th um she goes through a wall and the wall's not there anymore. Yeah, so I uh with that as perspective, I probably uh go deep on that momentum, mm -hmm. right? So I, I probably add some extra boost speeds in there, just so that we know that when when uh they impact, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. Um, and then when I activate that drive because I, I missed my trajectory, uh, I'd probably be looking at like environmental effects, uh, to really like set up the stage for for uh, fun set pieces. Mm -hmm. So, the next one that I have is Hadron, whose quirk is Event Horizon. Um, the a lot of, a lot of what they're ab a lot of what they're able to do is cr is the creation the creation manipula manipulation of the like of gravity and gravity wells and also um, reversing um, said gra said gravity wells to essentially use them to repel instead of attract and tr and messing with what and messing with what is the downforce for somebody. Um, if you're familiar with Stormlight Archive, it's not too far removed from uh, lashings. Uh, I I am not. <laughs> um, one, um, some pe some some individuals in that particular series have have the ability to do, to uh, do um, lashings, which what they basically do is cha is change where is change where that that subject um, considers down to be. Okay. So the, so they can they can walk on walls bec they can walk or run on walls or ceilings because for them d the downward force is in that direction instead of where it normally is. All right. So uh, let me start by saying that uh, in the core book, one of the example powers is called gravitational, and I think this is going to um, hit on where we want to go with this character. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it starts off as a support power, and uh, we actually, we, dealer's choice, it's either going to support your strength or your movement, right, depending on which way you want to take it. Uh, we have multiple different, like, uh, range options for them, um, but at the, the heart of the power, it is uh, an alter gravity with improved or worse results. Mm -hmm. So I can remove gravity, or I can make gravity worse. Um and then we're also going to pick up that, that meddling and disorienting because I can create fluctuating gravity wells. Um, we're going to pick up a secondary role for offense and defense um, because I'm manipulating gravity. Therefore, uh, you know, I can just hit you with a gravity bomb and you, you won't know what hit you, literally. Uh, or, you know, if you try and like hit me, I can slow it down because gravity is working against you because I have directional ability that way. Right. Um, as part of the offense aspect of it, um, we're going to add in devastating just because that's a fun one. Uh, we're going to add in blast. So if I do try and like hit you with like a gravitational wave, I can send you flying away. Right. Uh, alternatively, uh, we're also going to hit you with uh, trapping, which is like, oh, no, well, I'm going to put you in a, a zero G field where you're floating like four inches off the ground. Can't really touch anything. And, um, anyone that wants to do anything to you, uh, it'll just completely ignore my trap, uh, but you're going to have to deal with getting out of that gravity well. Would, tra would trapping also apply if they wanted to, if they wanted to rapid, if they wanted to rapidly increase the relative gravity in a, in a given area, so everything, so everything in it is just ridiculously heavy? Yeah, so that, that'd be the other way to take it. Like, I, I just like the idea of, like, floating in the air, but, like, if I want to take it, like, oh, I've increased the gravity where you're at like tenfold. Boom. So um, the way the system works is I, I can use that with my attack and have it trap at the same time. So you get hit with this like amazing force just slamming you into the ground, right? Doing its initial damage and then just locking you in place because the gravity is so strong. Mm -hmm. um, right? Given, given that, that how... the power is just the way it's set up. Given that, how would you handle the opposite of someone creating a field so that everything and it is ridiculously light. Um, so I, I would just do the same thing except I wouldn't apply the damage. 
Right. Again, this is the player's choice on whether or not they're doing damage with the attack that's trapping the person. Yeah. Um. In that case, in that case of ridiculous lightness, it would make it. Um. I could I could see um visualizing it as they as some is if somebody if somebody wanted to get if somebody was to get thrown or knocked back in that in that field, um the knockback effect would be a lot more amplified. Yeah. So that's that's where that boost or that blast boom that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Right, uh, and uh, that knocks you back entire range increments when you uh, have blast on there. All right, right, uh, and the the way I set up the gravitational is like if you get hit with a gravitational wave, I can send you two range range increments away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, you can invest willpower in it if you want to like, uh, if you want to go like full on team rockets blasting off again, mm -hmm. just. Pump some into your your blast, uh, and each additional instance gives you another range increment. So you can really just like knock them out of the combat because you've thrown them so far with your your gravitational wave. Yeah. Now, when it when it com when it comes now with the next one, it is um, cordyceps, who who um now the their quirk is no, sorry, uh, go on. Their quirk is um seed is seedbed, and this it's technically plant control, but the th the thing is this isn't say poison ivy who can who can just who can just make plants who can just make plants around willy nilly. Um, they have to they, it's more it's more that they have to plant um plant various plant various seeds and essentially use the, use their use their body as well. A, a seed bed to create that to create that rapid growth or ch or change of what's going to what's going to grow out of them. And how long does this take to go into effect? Seconds. Okay, so it, it is like I throw seeds on the ground and then you know things kind of come out. It yeah, it's it's just not in the ground. It's it's implanting the seeds with within within her body. Oh, I I see, I see, I see. Okay. So so no zombie ants. No. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. Um. All right. So I'm going to start with the again. We have an example power called plant control. Hmm. Let me start here, and see how close this is going to get us. Um. And then we can modify that power accordingly. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, alter plant growth with a good, uh, uh, improved worst results and flexible alter so we can make it whatever shape we want and it lasts for a long time. Okay. Uh, we have barrier, which, uh, it creates a permanent barrier. It creates a large barrier so it can block entire range increments and ironically the does not root advantage so that, uh, the character can keep moving. Um, we, we picked up meddling again for this character because we can have vines and such growing around people and, and uh, you know, harrying them in different ways. Um, I gave them plant speech. It doesn't sound like this character would have that. Um, and then we, we gave them an offensive role with continuous and trapping mm -hmm. uh, so that if they focus on somebody, they can just continue to send plant life at them that is going to attack and harm somebody. And then, uh, effectively, that also comes with a trap that just reinforces itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, this also has the limitation of the the barrier being vulnerable to fire. Yeah. And I, I might pick up a vulnerability of fire for the character themselves as well. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's the, the base plant control that's included in the, in the core book. Mm -hmm. um, how close does that hit to what you're looking at? I, I, would, I would say that the... Um, the main... Uh, much. Do you remember how when we when we did Jet Falcon, there was there was the whole limitation that they um that they that even though there's a whole amount of versatility, they have to do a bit of pre-planning. I'm thinking something like this because because um in order because despite despite that level of despite a wide level of variety, in order to act, in order to actually use this, they still need they still need seeds and those and um. Those oh. and those seeds burn out quick. 
So what I would do is I, I would take limited uses as a drawback. Um, so that uh, eventually they're just going to run out. Yeah. Um, and they can, uh, when, when you run out, you can either, you know, take time to find more or, or spend willpower to kind of edit the scene and have more. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, that would be how I, I represent that. Yeah. And uh, now the, the, um, the penultimate one that I have, that I have on the list is Thrudgelmir, whose quirk is Jotun. Um, when I when I visual when I visualize through Gel, through Gelmir, um, I will admit, when I was thinking of characterization, I kept thinking of a no, a um a Norse version of Colossus because despite 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 how strong he is, Colossus is is everybody's bro, <laughs> um, and the the or surrogate dad figure. Huh? Go on, I said the, or surrogate father figure. Yeah. <laughs> Fair, fair point, but the his main his his main his main of his main effect is uh, is obviously being obviously being able to grow giant sized. I'm say, I'd say I'd say about twenty five about twenty five feet tall, and um it and is is able to is able to um t is able to take on take on some some degree of of fi of fire or ice manipulation, depending on whether it's closer to the summer or winter in the year, because you know, fire giant, ice giant. So in summer, it's ice giant because you want to stay cool, and then in winter, it's fire giant because you want to be warm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excuse me. I'm sorry about the cough. Mm -hmm. Um. So for this character, um. In their base form, before they uh, they they grow, do they have any any special powers, or it's like it, it's all key to their growth? Um, the only the only the only thing of the only thing of no the only thing of note is is them is them just being them just being built like a truck like like, like um I they're not they're not gonna be they're not gonna be walking around with six packs, but they would they would be somebody who would um. Who would be who would be right at home regularly competing in Ironman competitions? Um, okay. If you so, you've it's seen, not superhuman levels of strength, but it is still strong. Yeah. Um. If you've okay. seen Game of Thrones, think the mountain. Uh, I I I have a vague understanding of that character. All right. So for this one, um. We're going to start with a support power. I'm going to start with Alter Self, mm -hmm. because Alter Self is going to be the the key for everything, right? Uh, and we're going to find that as they grow in size, okay? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> then we're going to pick up a, a secondary role for defense, a secondary role for offense. Um, we're going to add in... Um, armor and we can scale that however high you want which is like um you know base armor is, is basically like well um punches kicks like baseball bats i can ignore that mm. uh um boost armor uh i can shrug off uh firearms and then impervious is like well they threw a tank at me and i threw it back mm -hmm. um so you know whatever fits for the what you're visualizing is where I would go with that. Um, I'd say then... I'd say um, I'd I'd say I'd I'd say the the first tier of that like they're not they're not going to be able, they're not going to be stopping they're not going to be stopping actually I would say, I'd say when it comes to the whole getting sh getting shot at it's more of they're j they're just he's just ridiculously tough so so small arms fire. It's certainly going to hurt, but it's not going to stop them. Yeah. So, um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, um, armor doesn't necessarily mean like um, it plinks off, right? Um, it could be that just they're so tough, like it hurts, it like penetrates the skin, but there's just so much of his bulk that he can keep going. Mm hmm. 
right? Uh, and so that that's a visualization uh, thing that you want to really define with the character, so that we we understand where they're coming from. Um, the other thing that I would probably pick up for them is um, uh, defense against quickness, right? So some some attacks are are based on speed, some attacks are based on on strength. Um, this character doesn't care because they just have so much bulk, right? They're just going to absorb everything, right? Um, then on the the offensive side, I'm I'm just going to pick up um, offensive. Or uh, just the secondary uh, role of offense, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm probably going to pick up uh, things like uh, a typical radius <clears throat> and a uh, a ranged boon. Uh, not that they are, um, you know, have some ranged attack that I, I'm seeing or, or I'm picturing initially, but just because they have this extra reach, mm-hmm. right? So. So you might be uh, 50 feet away from me, but that's really, I take two steps and I hit you, right? Because I'm, I'm that big. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if that's too giant for your giant character uh, or if that's on par, but, you know, again, we can adjust if, if that's not uh, accurate to your envision, to what you envision. I'd say, um, I'd say that's, I'd say that would certainly be the case because the reason I bring up tw- the reason I bring up twenty five feet tall because I see it I, I see him when he goes when he goes full size to be um this to be the size of a mecca. Yeah, so I, I'd also pick up like a, a new movement. Mm-hmm. Um, not that he's super fast. It's just that again, just taking a step is like a range increment for him, right? So we'll represent that as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now comes the question of fire and ice manipulation. Okay, so you actually, uh, it's not that they have, like, I shoot fire beams or I shoot ice lasers. It's that they can manipulate heat and cold, right? Yeah. Um, so I would, again, pick up an altar with uh, improved worst results. Uh, I pick one or the other, right, fire or ice. Mm-hmm. And then I'd also take the alternate source uh, so I can I can just have it flip between fire and ice. Um, and then I can take a limitation of saying that's seasonally locked, right? Mm-hmm. In summers, I'm a fire giant. In winters, I'm an ice giant, uh, or, or vice versa. Just however, that, that works out in your canon. Yeah. Um, whatever the season, whatever the season is, he would be the opposite is how, is how we're going with it. Oh, Hey, I, I, I was joking earlier, but it looks like I got it right. So awesome. <laughs> um, and then I don't think necessarily I would give him like devastation or devastating, mm-hmm. but I might use willpower to pick that up for if there's a fire around and I want to punch somebody and make the fire like, uh, you know, join in on the attack, right? Or I want to just like sweep, like take a, a burning blaze. And, and have that sweep over somebody, right? I'd use willpower for all sorts of, you know, interpretations on their attacks. Right. All right. Um, and I'd say, when it comes, when it comes to, now, um, what would, it, what would, what would change if we wanted to put the limitation that say he can only go full, he can only go full sized for, um, let's pull an Ultraman and say three minutes. So, um, I would just, I, I would write it just like that as a limitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and now that's a thing, right? So there, there's not a lot of additional rules. It's just after three minutes, you have to turn your power off. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now I will say this because we have, um, flexible time increments when it comes to combat and it makes it's based on what makes narrative sense okay so that's not going to be a huge limitation in say a traditional like we're fighting the legion of evilness mm-hmm. right but metahumans rising includes rules for like oh 
there is an avalanche and we have to stop this from uh destroying the the uh the village or or town that's at the base of the mountain right and that's a much bigger limitation in those scenarios right uh as a gm i might allow you to get like i use my giant size as a factor in maybe the first couple of actions but after that it's really going to be like because we're narrating these big things you're probably going to have to come up with uh solutions without using your giant size Mm -hmm. right um so that's it's a it's a fun limitation and it comes into play in, in in very different ways because um because of the way uh combat plays out versus disasters versus like extended contests and stuff like that yeah so but yeah not not really difficult to incorporate mm-hmm. now the the la- the last one that the last one that I did want I didn't want to delve into because um in the la- in the la- in my last few reviews I've kind of used this character as a bit as a bit of a um a bit of a a bit of a channel mascot and when and um, used whenever I d- whenever I do a review of any game that is leaning a bit more universal okay and that is Alden Zabek um, Robinson um who's Pri- whose primary gimmick is uh, is cryomancy, but specifically use utilizing it to create um, melee weapons. Okay. So this is going to be very similar to that that ice or the to the the stone manipulation character. Um, um we might. Like, because so he's weapon focused, it doesn't necessarily create armor. We can just skip that aspect of it, mm-hmm. right? But we're gonna we're gonna keep that uh, that alter because we're gonna be able to create ice. Um, and then uh, um, as far as like creating the ice weapons, uh, we're gonna do that full roll for offense, and we'll take devastating. We'll probably take boost devastation. Um, which is just like it does more damage because he's like again he's a he's a striker kind of concept. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on how you see his ice manipulation, will pick up some trapping maybe. Um, depending on how again how you envision the ice, we could also do like a um, a drain. Uh, so like every time he hits you, um, you know he he siphons off your heat and and uh reduces like your your characteristics or something like that just again this is like however you want to envision the character um, um when it comes to trapping the only way the only way i see him doing having that kind of setup is if is trapping through say a um, something like a man catcher spear okay so it is it is really weapons focused i got gotcha. you um yeah so i would skip the trapping right uh, I, I would instead use like grappling maneuvers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and I, what I might do with this character is I build the power. It's going to be kind of a narrow power mm-hmm. um, because he's just creating these weapons with it. Um, and I, I might drop that altar and control altogether, right? Um, but instead, just say, "Hey, look, I, I can create weapons out of ice." And then I'm going to probably take a martial art as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> And so, for the fighting style, I'll, I'll get into uh, like combat maneuvers and and defining how I want the character to look by taking specialties, right? So, if I want them to be um, kind of a tricky fighter, I might take specialties in like bypassing armor or trip attacks. If I want them to be all about like. Uh, just hammering people down. I might take a specialty in like heavy blow or a power strike. Um, this is more of then... a. Um, this is more. This is more of a. Fe- this is very much more of a fence. More more on the. Um, fe- more on the fencer type. This isn't really a. Ta- this isn't really a tanky build. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, like I said, I, I might do something more like a uh, focus on like bypass armor. Um, uh focus on like a uh, staggering um things like that to to put my opponent off balance mm-hmm. right 
And my cryomancy is really just a, a means for me to fight my opponent using the skills that I have. Yeah. Right. And that's how you, you have both the, the, the cryomancy, which creates my weapons. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have my, my fighting style, which is, you know, ice fencing or, or however you want to define that. Yeah. Um, to, um, give now to throw a bit of a monkey wrench in it. Cause if, if this particular individual ha had, um, had, the ability to kind of to kind of learn and mimic uh, mimic other people's fighting styles by observation, um, to a certain um, not too far removed from somebody like Taskmaster, for instance. Um, how would how would that be um, represented? Uh, so, uh, how are they at general code breaking? Like in ter in terms of seeing patterns, recognizing them. Uh, deciphering codes, that sort of thing. Um, that fair, fairly adept at that. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to take the tab, uh, talent of uh, cryptography. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, a lot of talents in Meta Humans Rising have innate advantages. The advantage of cryptography is when someone repeats an attack, you get a bonus against them. Okay, and then I would also take a specialty that says once I've triggered my cryptography advantage, I get an advantage on offense as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or I might just have my cryptography support offense once I've activated uh, the defense bonus from it, right? So it, that's actually kind of already baked in there. Mm -hmm. Um and and we're just going to to use that talent to to give him that ability. All right, that that certainly that certainly makes sense. Um, and of course the the main re the main re um, the main re the main reasoning for for that for that sort of setup is is simply so. Um, this is this particular character when when the, if you can vis, when I visualize them fighting, it's not it's not the case of them manifesting one type one type of one type of weapon, say a longsword, and that's all they're using for that encounter. Mm -hmm. um, they're constantly they're constantly shifting between types of melee weapons. They might use a sword one moment, then a spear the next, then an axe another moment, then a great sword another, and just keep, and just constantly shifting. Yeah, so. I, I think we don't have to change anything that we've said already. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of that fits with, with how we're defining the character. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things, like another talent I might pick up for the character would be uh, tactics. Um, I probably pick up like perception and intuition as well. Um, and then, you know, whatever other interests they might have. But this will make them a, a strong, uh, not just um give them uh advantages for for identifying what's happening in a fight mm -hmm. uh but also give them the ability to assist others in a in a skirmish uh due to having good tactics yeah i will i will admit that um when i whenever i've brought up this character for commissions um two two visualization examples i give when it comes to this style of combat are um Firion, who in um in the city of Final Fantasy, and um, Noctis from Final Fantasy Fifteen. I I I don't have either of those references. I the last Final Fantasy game I played was Final Fantasy Ten. Ah, um, the whole the whole thing with with Fir Furion was originally in two, but okay. um, the but the city was this was this cross game um was this cross game fighter that got two games on the PSP and then a then one on the PS and then one on the PS4 and PC. Um, the whole the whole thing with Furion is ha is having ten different weapons that he u that he uses in har in harmony with in harmony with each other in his combinations. Um, like say throwing in throwing an axe, then using the sword, then using the then using the spear. It's it's a case of it's a case of treating individual weapons as just parts of co of combos. Yeah. Um, so that, that brings up another thing, like, um, 
when you go down that fighting style uh, route, you, you can also pick up combos as uh, non-powered boons. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually did a series on martial arts and, and uh, uh, different fighting styles from the real world. Mm-hmm. But um, the the uh, the point I was getting at is because we we try to blend narrative and mechanics together. There is nothing inhibiting you from saying, okay, so I have this um, attack, move, attack combo. Mm-hmm. And that takes the shape of um, I, I hit the guy that's next to me with a ice sword. I, I run and then I throw an ice spear at another person, right? Or uh, other situation is, um, you know, I... I uh, I use a, um, uh, you know, I, I somehow uh, use a, a different, like, uh, it's an axe this time, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, I'm trying to think, like, uh, it's, well, you can't really do, like, a meteor hammer out of ice, but that'd be kind of cool, right? Um, <laughs> well, you, well, give, well, given the fi- given the fact that I, sa- that I said and I said any weapon, as long as it's a melee weapon, a meteor hammer would still count. Yeah. Well, I, I was just picturing that ice is rigid, and that's that's a uh, you know it's it's a flexible weapon. But yeah, like if you could do that out of ice, all for it, right? And just you know just vary up. You, like it's incumbent on the player to vary their descriptions in the narrative so that we can visualize that, right? But there's nothing mechanically preventing you from it's the right weapon for the right job. Yeah, right. And then you can get into. Um, get into i i'm applying uh you know willpower for uh additional power booms or or other uh different tricks that i want to do to um support uh switching weapons or, or whatever that, you know might be mm-hmm. so like if i use a great sword and attack my base power might have devastating but then i add on boost devastation right yeah or i might take total devastation and uh that's a once per session thing but i use it again because i'm using a great sword Right, it just—it really depends on on uh, how into the weeds we want to get with that build, but it's totally doable. Yeah, and you pro- you probably already figured out that th- that um, when it comes to this ice creation, it's near instantaneous. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I I felt I felt I, I felt I should point that out, given how we've ta- given how we've talked about time factor with some uh, with some other abilities. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh. Uh totally this can be like completely fluid right Mm -hmm. and you know again this is all like in the narrative so it could be that like the the weapon dissolves or the weapon disappears as i create the new one or it just morphs into the new one as i use it right i was going with Uh, the with the whole um when switching one one of them one of them disappear one of them disappears and then a new one is made yeah so it's like, uh, you know, I throw the ice spear and it breaks, and I have a sword and I slash with it, and it's gone. Then I have an ice shield, and you know, and um, qu- one of the, one one particular question that I think that I think is inevitable when it comes to this sort when it comes to this sort of thing is I would it I I get the f- I get the feeling that unlike unlike some other unlike some other games, especially games that involve twenty sided dice, um. Dual wielding is not as much of a scub issue here. So, like, there's a couple of ways to handle dual wielding, and, and this is actually in the the Kickstarter. Uh, I think there's someone asked me when I ran a quick start about uh, dual wielding. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's all in the narrative, right? Um, you can do things like uh, taking combos for attack and attack if you really want to, like model the mechanics of I, I do things back to back. Um uh or you can just say like I, I can't, right? And uh I don't worry about the mechanics beyond that. Uh you can do things like uh a specialty for rapid actions because you're using two weapons. You can do things like take the uh surprising boon, which just gives you a extra action once per session. Right, there's all these different ways that you can kind of incorporate that, but there's nothing that says like I have to have this perk and that perk and this other perk to make an effective two-handed weapon fight or two two-weapon combat, mm-hmm. right? 
Uh, there, there, there's none of that. And the which is which is certainly appreciative because as I, as I mentioned, sometimes um, ga some some games will ha will treat dual wielding as a pay to not suck kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I, I think one of the things that we tried to do with Metahumans Rising is assume your characters are awesome and then uh what you put points into is where you're more awesome mm -hmm. right so if you uh one of the sample characters um uh or, or one of the hollow edges characters is a character named heliquin and uh she uses uh dual pistols right and so i think if i remember correctly the way we modeled that for her um is we gave her an ability uh or we gave her combos for just making a bunch of attacks rapid fire right um whether they use it or not you can still define in the narrative that they're firing multiple shots right they're firing multiple rounds at once mm -hmm. um and then um yeah so it, it wasn't a Oh, and they took a, a specialty for um, uh, uh, when they want to make a radius attack because they're just shooting bullets in every direction, all equilibrium style. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that that's how we handle it. And it's not that they needed it to use two guns. It's like because they're using two guns, these are the different things we took to make them look awesome while doing it. I uh, I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that, and and because because of that I can def I can definitely I can definitely see a good a good variety of of material that with this that provides a, that provides a foundation but also provides enough wiggle room so that this isn't the um and this isn't the end all of it. Uh, I w uh, could you could you explain what you mean there a little bit more? What I, what I mean is what I mean is that there's is that within even within the purview of the power sets that we've discussed, there's still there's still room to expand and cu and customize um, with time. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. So again, like willpower is the ultimate. Well, I, I want to do this at least to try it out. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's it's really a great way to grow a character is like I'm using this willpower or I'm I'm using um, willpower tricks to do this same thing over and over again. I should probably go ahead and invest in doing that as a default thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so you mentioned Marvel Heroic as like the baseline for this, but if we go back to like Marvel superheroes like uh, Phase Rip, mm -hmm. um, you could really equate it to like how they used uh power stunts which cost you karma before you bought into a new power stunt right um except that you're not using xp to try before you buy you have willpower to let you do that yeah which the interest the the interesting thing for me with that kind of with that kind of setup is as i've talked about before um analysis paralysis is still a thing and yeah there, there's the temp there's the temptation to to stick with what feels like is always going to work which me which means that which means that in extreme cases people don't experiment as much as they would otherwise yeah so we, we do a couple of things to to help combat analysis paralysis and again it, it's working with this concept of we don't want there to be a wrong way to build a character mm -hmm. right we we want you to be able to experience your superhero the way you envision them uh and and we're, we're providing you the tools to do that um one of the like optional creation methods would be to not like when you're building a character you get some baseline points to put into powers and pick out like these power boons that i've been talking about but then at the end you get advancement points which are um way uh points that you use to round out the character Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, taking a page from uh, uh, games like Hero Quest, we said you don't necessarily have to spend those right away. All right, 
if you don't know the direction you want to take your character, build out using the the core point arrays that we give you, you'll be competent and you'll be good at certain things, right? And then just spend your AP as you realize this is how I, I see my character going and this is what I want them to be good at, right? Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, like, right from the beginning, if you're unsure, that's okay. And then even if you are sure and you're like, wow, I, I built this character in a way that I don't like, one, I don't think a GM should like limit you for going back and like letting you tweak your character. Um, but two, you're like, oh, I wish I picked this other thing up. That's where willpower comes in. Like, okay, well, I'm just going to use willpower to supplement it until I can buy it. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, re we really want to make sure that when you're playing as a superhero, you're playing the superhero that you have pictured. So I I can cert I can certainly get that since that's that's something that a lot of superhero games have have kind of have kind of struggled with. I'd say and I'd say a lot of and some of some of I've seen some people argue that the way the solution to do, the solution to fixing that problem is to go um, narrative narrative centric and basically go. Basically, lean more in the direction of, say, fate. But I've always been of the mindset that that you can certainly do that, but I wouldn't call it a solution; more of a sidestep. So, uh, I, I feel like uh, the open action, so the the the, the rules engine beneath uh, Metahumans Rising, mm -hmm. lives in this weird space between. Um, um, rules heavy and rules lights games, rules or, or narrative heavy versus mechanics heavy games. Would you, uh, say, would you uh, say that your rules medium? Uh, I I would like to think so because we have like an over like there's a there's a core mechanic on how to determine resolution mm -hmm. and that applies to everything and it's just in different interpretations of how you apply that rule. Um, but the more what I was getting at is like, um, we are a narrative forward game. And narrative uh, impacts the the uh, mechanics, right? So you define your character's personality through drives. Those get values assigned to them. And when they come up and play, you get those values as bonuses. And you get willpower. And willpower lets you push your character, right? Um, we uh, So the narrative, like you play to your character... You generate willpower, you create drama, you create story, right? And that facilitates you going beyond what's on the character sheet, right? And allowing you to really um, push your hero to these levels that you want to see them. Right, Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but with with all that with all that said, I do want to thank you for going through this. Um... Interesting little ex little exper little um thought experiment. I know I know that this I know that this was this was kind of a left field bit of bit of idea crafting. Uh, well, certainly fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, I uh, I think that this would be a very interesting super team. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, it, cer it certainly would, and there's plenty. And there's plenty of room for dysfunction. If there's an if there's any takeaway I have, it's the, it's how the dice laid on so many um support archetypes. Uh, so here's the funny thing. Like, uh, when I say we're gonna start as a support power, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that doesn't mean that's all there is to it. So, um, the it's just where we're starting. What 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 is the 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 base function of it, and then we build off of that, right? Um, and you can take a secondary role, and and that gives you like your your doorway into offense or defense if you if you're a support power. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can take uh, an extra uh, advancement called full role, which means it's just as effective as its primary function, right? So uh, again, it's just a a way of you know where do we start with the character as opposed to where do they end up. Right. I, I, 
yeah, I can I can certainly get that. But anytime you anytime you'd see fit to retur to return to the temple, as you know, the the door is always open. And as is often said here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I, I support all this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay Fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>